my 23 favorite plants of 2023. Let's go! Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Or if you're new, my name is Rose, my pronouns are she, her. And in this video, I'm gonna share my 23 favorite plants of 2023. Keep in mind that currently, most of my collection does not live with me. It's in other places because of our home renovation. So I've picked from the ones that are currently with me to keep it a little bit accessible. You may be wondering why are we in the greenhouse? Because I'm dividing this up by genus and I wanted to start with cacti and succulents. With, first of all, an honorable mention for jungle cacti. I've had these for a while to grow in the greenhouse and actually they have not been doing very well here because they get too much light. And once I started growing them in my house under grow lights inside, they started to do so much better. I love seeing the new growth. I have these in the greenhouse now only because the main plants of these are currently with my sister-in-law. So they'll come back after the renovation. My first official pick for this list is the booby cactus. The Geometricans Fukuyama flubidi flubidi flub. I cannot pronounce it, I'll put it on the screen. It's the longest plant name I've ever seen. It's my little baby. I love the booby look. It's a little bit actually dehydrated. So it looks like older boobs or heavier boobs or mom boobs. I love that too. We respect all forms of boobs over here. It's so cute. I'm so happy with this. I'm quite new to cacti and succulents, so I really hope that they're gonna be doing okay. I have them in the greenhouse here, I'm not watering them for winter, and hopefully they'll make it through winter so that next summer they can enjoy all the sunshine and warmth again. My second pick is this adorable spiral cactus. It's not officially called a spiral cactus, it's a Ulyssia spiralis or something. We found this in a garden center and both my boyfriend and I just loved the look of it because it's so organized. Normally I think it goes in a spiral, but this one doesn't because it has this point I think on the back where it's a little bit disturbed and that's why in the front it looks like just perfect donut rings on top of each other. I'm learning and I've been enjoying growing these very much. It's pretty cold out here, so let's head inside to the terrarium because the next category is terrarium plants. I know that's not a genus, I'm cheating a little bit. Terrarium. And the first plant or the first genus that I'm picking from this is Labicia. They are so beautiful. There's a lot of different ones. I love the ones with the pink lines, but I also really like my dino skin one or rhino skin. There's different names for it. I got this from a friend and it's been growing really well and it just looks very, very cool. The second plant I want to show you here looks a little bit similar. It's called an Acrantera species Vietnam. And it's this red one with the bubbly leaves, the very, very cool looking texture. It looks like a dinosaur as well, I feel like. I really love growing this. It had a huge setback a while ago and then it grew back. So that makes it extra, extra nice to see now. It came back from the dead. And the last plant I picked from the terrarium, I think will be clear for everyone, is the Selaginella wildendawi. It's the blue ferny type plant that's in there and it's been growing really well. It's taking over. I actually took some cuttings that are not growing at all in a little pot and the part that I kept in here is doing so, so well. It's almost taking over the rest of the plants. It's growing against the tops of different plants where the new leaves come out and then they get damaged. It's not the kindest to its fellow plants, but I love it. Coming up the stairs, we see this beautiful begonia terrarium. So the next category is begonia. It's a bit too dark in the stairway, so I brought some begonia upstairs to show you. My first pick might not be a surprise to anyone, is the Chlorosticta cross with Amphioxus that has been growing so well for me. I love how dark it gets. It's very velvet and shimmery. This was the leaf it came with. You can see it probably got a little bit more light where it came from. And the leaves that it's been growing in my care just got very dark. I love that. I love this one. It's kept me going. Literally, I would look at it every day during the renovation and it just makes me really happy. Can't really explain why, except pink, velvet, and darkness. And the shape as well, I love that. My second begonia pick is the Begonia species Sarawak that I've also showed before in one of these videos. Check out this beauty. I've been growing it in this weird little food container box in a special begonia soil and it's been going really well. In fact, it was growing so well over here that I actually took a cutting of this because it was growing outside of 
the little box as you can see here and I planted it in my big terrarium I'm not sure if it would work it definitely worked and what I find so fascinating about begonia is here there's new growth you can see it growing it's doing really well but it looks a little bit brownish maybe even a little bit pinkish over here if we look at the one in the terrarium it is so dark it's super super blue I didn't even know these would get super blue I love that so much it's actually growing too at the bottom of the terrarium it doesn't get much light there so I love my last begonia pick also probably is not a surprise to many people this is begonia nortobaramensis that I got as a little rescue project and Hold on, yeah, there we go. These leaf shapes are so beautiful. They're kind of long and angelic. And then all along the edge, there is a pink shimmery line. This one probably would be a little bit darker if I had it in a different space, in a less light situation. But I'm just happy that it's actually growing now. There's a new leaf. And once I have it a little bit more established, I might take some cuttings and try to grow some more because this is definitely one of the most beautiful begonia I have ever seen. You can actually see me staring at the viewfinder all the time. My eyes are over there instead of looking at you because it's just so beautiful. Next up, we are in my little room where I've spent most of the past two months and where most of my plants currently live for our first aeroid selection, the Alocasia. And my first pick is Alocasia Jacqueline that I currently only have this baby of, my big ones. I had two big ones, they both died. This is not an easy plant. And I feel like because it's pretty wobbly in here, there are some roots that you can see, but I'm not quite sure if it's fully happy. Of course, with Elocasia, it's normal for them to go into dormancy in winter. So all the leaves will die back and then the corm in spring will grow new growth. So it's totally okay if our Elocasia are lo losing their leaves and their roots as well. They can definitely come back from that unless it's stem rot and then I usually give up. But this one is an especially tricky one. I'm currently growing it in one of my grow boxes and that's the only way that I've been able to keep this happy a little bit longer than normal. This has been with me for several months now, growing from a little corm that I took from the big plant. The next one is actually not an Elocasia, but closely related. This is my Leucocasia Gigantea Thai Giant. This is the one that can get huge leaves, like in the botanical gardens. And of course this had to be on my list because I got this in June this year as a tiny, tiny seedling and it, it has sized up quite a lot. This was the biggest leaf in the greenhouse, but with winter and less light and colder temperatures, this is the next leaf. I'm trying to overwinter this inside, so to keep it alive. And then hopefully in spring, we can move it back into the greenhouse and then outside once it gets really big in my dreams so far, but I have high hopes for it. And the last Elocasia on the list, I'm sure you have guessed, is my Elocasia Frydeck, Mycolitsiana Frydeck, the actual variegated one. Look at this beauty. As you can see, whoop, there's a lot of stuff behind me. A lot of the leaves have gone very, very droopy, which like I said, with dormancy is normal. I'm not too worried about it. I still really appreciate the beauty of them. This one is really yellowing, so this is about to go. It's one of the older ones. But this main one is still growing high and proud to the grow light. I have these all actually in... Ooh, there's still some water in there. That's a bit much. In semi-hydro. And that's been working out a lot better for me than growing them in my airy soil mix like I did before. Then we're moving on to Anthurium, one of my absolute favorite genuses, genera in all of them, especially this one. Look at this beautiful velvet shimmery leaf. They come in really nice brown, warm, reddish. And this one is the Papillilaminum Legend Sipanas crossed with Papillilaminum Old Clone. And I absolutely love this one. It sized up for me quite a lot as well. I think this was the first leaf it grew for me and it's sizing up. I'm hoping it makes it well through winter or makes it through winter well and then sizes up a little bit more because the bigger these beautiful velvet leaves, the better in my opinion. The next anthurium I'm picking <laughs> is this one, Poly D. This is my anthurium Polydiflorum that unfortunately I dropped a while back and this leaf ripped in several places 
the sticky tape that I had put on there didn't hold. So <laughs> I actually put some really high quality builder's tape on there now because it was almost like really almost falling apart. That's not the only reason this deserves a spot though. I also think it's really fast growing. It grew already two leaves for me. I got this in, I don't even remember the market at Myrtis. This was watered three days ago. It's now fully dry again. I think this pot is just full roots and might need a repot. I'm waiting until spring with that, but I'm definitely gonna water this after <laughs> filming this video because it is thirsty. The last anthurium on this list is anthurium blackjack. I always mess up that name. Blackjack or Jack Black, one of the two. It's this, I don't know what the cross is actually. I might have to look that up. It's really beautiful velvet, a little bit of peltate, I think it's called when they're bobbly. And it has a new leaf that shows you why it's on the list. The new leaves come in like this. It has such a beautiful shape that reminds me of like Dresslery or Hoffmanni or whatever they're called. I, like I said, don't know what's in this hybrid. I really need to look that up. And the leaves come in really nice and red with the cute ears. And the velvet actually doesn't show when they're a little bit younger but it really is very velvet look. This one as well grew really fast for me. I got it smaller than this leaf and all of these leaves have grown in my care. Like you see here, it's sized up quite a lot and I'm very curious to see how big this leaf will get. You may be curious why I didn't mention my Anthurium Carla Blackiae, which is a very, very special plant. But to be honest, since it's still very small, it, I don't know, it's nice. It's adorable, I love it. I hope it sizes up more soon, but the bigger ones just win in this case. But maybe next year. She's just too young, I feel like, for the competition. Next up, let's talk about Hoya because I love them and I know quite a lot of you also love them. I've had some requests to make more Hoya videos. And I wanted to start with Hoya Tomsoni. This is the pink one. I love all of them, to be honest. I have all of them as well. I have a white one, I have a splashy one that has light pink flowers. And this one is the actual pink one, which people told me would grow very, very slowly. And it did, didn't grow super fast in the beginning, but this is all grown within, I think, I don't know when I got this from my friend Ans, but there's quite a few tendrils that are growing. And partly why it made the list, it has a peduncle that's budding up. I've had buds on this before, but they fell off, which often happens with Hoya when they first start to try to bloom, then they often drop the buds the first round. And it looks like I might get some beautiful pink fluffy flowers, which is part of why I wanted this plant for the flowers. I also love how hairy it is compared to the white one. The white flowered one is very, very... Yeah, the leaves look quite different from this. This is just more rough, <laughs> more rough hairs, I feel like. And I can't wait to see the flowers. So Hoya Tomsoni. The second Hoya is Hoya Clementiorum, the very uh, Jurassic Park looking one. And mine, as you can see, is pretty big. It has a, I don't know if I can show you. Yeah, a new leaf, new growth point behind here that I don't want to damage. So I'm trying to be careful. Look at those veins. It looks so weird. It also has a huge tendril that I've led up this bamboo stake to try and get some new leaves. I don't see any activated yet, but it is winter. It's not getting a ton of light here, so I'm patient with it. I absolutely love this one. This leaf is a little bit damaged, but that's okay. It still looks just so cool and dinosaur-y and especially with the size like this, I'm very, very excited. I'm hoping to move this back under the grow light it came from in maybe one week time because the builders are almost, almost done. So hopefully by then I can show you some more huge, beautiful Clementiorum leaves. Next Hoya is a little bit predictable maybe. It's my Hoya Karii. This is what a leaf looks like. I feel like it's not super happy in the current conditions, but it is what it is with the renovation. Look, it's still growing. It kind of reminds me of anthurium leaves. So that's why I love this one so much. It's a very, very quick and easy grower. Plus, I think I can show you here. This is a tendril 
but this was the main tendril. So it, on its own, it actually branches off quite often. I've had this happen quite a lot. So if you want this plant, I really believe that it will become more and more affordable because it's so fast growing. It's so cute. Okay, it's getting really dark. The next morning. Hello, it's the next day because the light was way too dark. Luckily today there are no builders, so it's a little bit easier to film during daylight hours. Next up, it's time for philodendron, a favorite of many, I think. My first pick from these is my philodendron gigas, which is such a beautiful velvet plant. I always try to show you the velvetness as best I can, but it's not easy. It's growing a new leaf here at the top where you can see that it's really nice and pink as it comes in and then it slowly fades to this more greenish color. This one has struggled a lot for me. I showed it in a previous video as well. There's no leaves at the bottom from thrips and just a struggle. There's some ugly, ugly leaves here, but it's sized up quite quickly. And this is actually easier to grow than Melanochrysum. I love the look of Melanochrysum and I love it in botanical gardens, but I cannot grow it here. I've tried for many years and it's just not doing very well. Even in a high humidity environment, it was not doing well. So I'm much happier with the simple Gigas that I didn't know would be this cool. I did just find some thrips on some of the philodendrons, so I'm gonna have to keep my eye out, but I love it. The velvet is so beautiful. The next one I picked, I'm sure, ooh, my hair, <laughs> many of you guessed. This is my philodendron Billetier variegated, and it's grown a lot. When I first got it, it struggled a lot. And then because it was kind of too deep in the soil, it was a top cutting with no growth yet, it started to grow several growth points to try and get out of the soil. And now I have three. <laughs> Three active growth points that are all very nicely variegated and all actively growing. So I am quite happy about that. That was a little mistake, but it turned out nice. This is one of the original leaves that doesn't have any variegation. Also very beautiful that way. But I love this one because it has the pink edges. I don't know if you can see. Officially, the petioles of the Billetier are orange. But here you can actually see they're almost pink. In my opinion, this one is more orange, traditional orange. Plants don't always do what they're supposed to. Beautiful, beautiful plant. I love this one. I hope to size it up a little bit more this next year. We're really at the end of the renovation now. So the house is starting to hopefully be a little bit more consistent in warmth and then humidity and we will see how it goes. My third pick for philodendron is another velvet one. This is my El Shoko or Philodendron Rubri Juvenile is the official name now. It is so impressive. You can't even see me. It's quite big. I bought it with leaves this size. All the damaged leaves were on it when I got it. This one too, I think. Yeah, this is one of the originals. And this one, people warned me that this was quite a slow growing plant, but it's grown three leaves for me since I got it earlier this year. This was the first one. Then immediately it sized up quite, quite a lot to this one. And even in the renovation chaos, it just opened this leaf as well. I absolutely love the color of the new leaves. And then of course, also the backsides are super, super red, which is beautiful. It's so shimmery and velvet. I have this on a moss pole, which I saw at Sydney plant guy, Jan and it's worked really well. As soon as I put it on there, I saw new aerial roots coming out. So I really think it loves it on a pole and that will help it to size up quicker. And I think also to grow quicker because the happy situation it created. Next up, we have one more philodendron and it's this one, of course, Rupert. If you don't know, this is my philodendron Florida beauty that I named Rupert after the shop I got it from and it is growing so well. I got this so small. These were leaves that it grew for me at first. And as you can see, it sized up a lot in and in shape as well, it matured. It grew two fully white or yellow leaves, variegated leaves for me, and a few more earlier that died off. But it came back strong with a beautiful variegated leaf here. So I'm very happy about that. Actually, I see a new root here as well. There's a little root right there growing into the moss pole. Moss pole is very dry, but I'm gonna put this in the bathroom and spray it 
so it gets happy again. I absolutely love this one. There's quite a few plants on this list that honestly I didn't think I would ever own, I would ever be able to grow because of their price on the market. I feel very lucky to have it and have it do so well as well because these can easily go either fully green or fully yellow, which I was a little bit worried about with these two leaves, but it's all good. This also definitely deserves a repot, but that will happen after the renovation is officially done. There's two more plants on this list. Hopefully I'm counting right because this is the second day of filming and it's the Monstera. So let's start small so it's a little bit easier to show you. This is my lovely Monstera obliqua Peru that I got as a wet stick from a friend and it took quite a long time for it to start growing but once it started it sized up quite quickly. There's also some adorable moss here. This was one of the first leaves it grew and this one as well very very small. Then it quickly started to get some holes and more holes. The camera's doing pretty well. This really started to look like what we know as obliqua. Crazy holes, it almost looks like a scream mask. And the latest one as you can see here sized up again a little bit more more holes and just a bigger leaf shape in general. And there is, I don't know if you'll be able to see, another new leaf on the way. Do you see the little point in the center there? That's amazing. This has been growing in one of my smaller terrariums. So I think actually the browning might be from how much light it gets because it gets blasted. Once the house is done, I will find it a new better spot with less light. But for now, I'm very happy it's going so well. I don't know if I'll be able to lift this last one up, so that should give you a good guess as to which plant it is. Okay, here we go. We can do it. My last pick is Thais, the Thai constellation, of course. This baby has been so happy in the renovation, being moved from very cold rooms with a lot of light to small rooms that are warm with no light or less light. I'm so impressed that the white still looks really white. So it's been through quite a lot, just as all of us. <laughs> and I'm really, really happy that it's doing so well. <clears throat> and that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please tell me in the comments what plant you like the most or what genus you like the most. That also really helps me for the new year to know what kind of videos I should be making. Thank you all so much for being here. An extra big thank you to my patron and YouTube members for supporting me. Or if you've ever clicked a link of mine, that's an affiliate link that really helps as well. So thank you all so much. Take care of yourselves. Have a wonderful end of the year. Be safe all the planty happiness and goodness for you, your families, your pets, and your plants. <laughs> Thank you so much, friends. Bye!